today right here on Smoky Mountain Faith Food and Fun. Christy's going to be making Debbie G's homemade tomato pie. Hey everybody, today we're going to do a southern tomato pie, specifically Debbie G's tomato pie. Now Debbie G is a good friend of mine and she's the one that taught me about tomato pie several years back and so I've made it several times and I love it and so today we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to start out with, it call, recipe calls for three large ripe tomatoes. We've got about four medium, so that's what we're going to do. Um, it calls for, let's see, three of the green onions. I've got some really big, beautiful green onions, so I think we're going to probably just go with one, of an, one and a half of these. Uh, fresh basil. You know what? I'm having a hard time finding fresh basil, so I ha might have to use the squeeze kind, which is all that, uh, that I can come up with, and that's going to be okay. Um, it'll work just fine. And then we're going to have a topping made out of mayonnaise, Dukes of course, uh, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese, and I like to add in a little bit of Italian seasoning. And then of course pie crust. It's a very easy pie to put together and so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to slice up my tomatoes. Now the, we've got to slice these beautiful tomatoes and get them, get them cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and get that done. i got a garbage bowl here. learned that from the infamous Rachel Ray many years ago. She always has a garbage bowl. I love that. And cut off those bottoms. And then this is a Rada tomato knife. My mom used these for years and now I use them. They are truly the best knife for cutting a tomato. It just gets right in there and gets what you got. So we're going to get the cores out. Now you want nice thick slices of tomato for this pie. So we're going to try and cut them as uniform as possible. And I like the fact that these four tomatoes are about the same size. Now we're not quite at tomato season, but I wanted to get, get this video out there before tomato season comes. We've got a uh, beautiful farmer's market and orchard up in Cosby, Tennessee called Carver's and they've always got nice ripe tomatoes. I think they said these are actually from Florida so um, I'm just happy to have found some ripe tomatoes but if you, if you grow your own tomatoes and that time is coming up here soon. You definitely want to try tomato pie. I thought initially when I first heard of a tomato pie, I thought that just doesn't sound good at all. I'm not sure about that. That I don't I don't know how I feel about that. So I saw her post, Debbie post on her Facebook page several different times when she made a tomato pie and I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna do this. So the last few years, at least one tomato pie makes its way into our kitchen about, you know, during tomato season. So I'm cutting those pretty uniform and we're going to throw them in a strainer until I get them finished. Get that. Cut. See how nicely the Rada knife goes through? That's beautiful tomatoes. Pretty, pretty. All right. That's more than enough, I think, to fill a nice size pie. these over here in the sink for a minute. I'm going to chop up this beautiful gorgeous onion. That is, uh, we got, I got these up in Indiana when I visited my mom. 
And another Amish Farmer's Market. Amish Farmer's Markets are um, awesome. You know, usually can get such amazing produce. I don't know, one of these onions might be the equivalent of three green onions. I think it probably is. So we might just stop at one. Let's see what it looks like once we get done here. So I'm curious if you've ever had a southern tomato pie and what you thought of it. Because like I said, I, I initially thought, nah, that's not my thing. But I, I really love them. Yeah, just a little bit finer. They're such big, beautiful onions. I love it when it's the dahlia onion seeds. And I bet a Vidalia onion will work in this too. Tomato knife works good for these as well. It's a great multi purpose knife, especially for cutting veggies. Beautiful. Okay. A bit more. I think we're going to stop at one onion. I, one of these is about the equivalent of three regular size. I'm going to take that out. Hear some snoring coming on from the peanut gallery over there. You might find that around these parts. It's earlier in the morning. I like to try to get video done early. So he's loud. I'm sure he isn't the first husband to snore through their wives' YouTube video. All right. Onions look good. I'm just gonna throw my knife a little bit through those finer. Cut that. Okay. So what we need to do now, and I'm gonna set these aside, is we are going to take our tomatoes and we're gonna let them drain on some paper towels for, I don't know, 10-15 minutes so that you get some of the um, water out because you don't want a watery tomato pie. Once we get these draining, um, we're going to come back and we're going to make the topping that goes on top of the tomatoes and the basil and the onions. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We've got our tomatoes on the uh, paper towels and they're draining. They're just going to they're going to drain. I'm probably going to turn them over here in a second so that the other side can get some of its moisture out. This is a really essential step with the tomato pie because you really don't want your pie to be runny. Um, these tomatoes aren't too, too juicy, but we want to do it anyway. Of course, once they cook, they'll start getting juicy. All right, so for our topping, and this literally is going to go right on top of the pie, we've got one cup of mayonnaise. And in this house, 
especially if we're cooking something, Duke's is the only way to go. I have a weird thing about mayo. I actually am... There's three different kinds of mayo that I will use. Dukes, I use Dukes when I'm making a salad or uh, cooking something like a tomato pie or an ingredient uh, like casserole, whatever. Hellman's is what I like for sandwiches. And then as a little girl, my favorite sandwich was what I called a mayonnaise sandwich. And I didn't even really understand what mayonnaise was. But to me, a mayonnaise sandwich was bologna, American cheese, and Miracle Whip. So I do have a little Miracle Whip on hand for those times that I want my mayonnaise sandwich. All right, so we've got this cup of mayonnaise in the bowl. And it says to add one cup of mozzarella cheese and one cup of um, sharp cheddar. So that's what I've got in this container. I kind of mixed them up beforehand to save a little bit of time on everybody's part. All right, so here's where I'm gonna go off the grid with the recipe. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And this is Pampered Chef Italian seasonings. If you aren't familiar with Pampered Chef seasonings, they are great. But uh, you notice I didn't even measure, I just sort of took a handful and, not a handful, but enough, about a tablespoon worth. You can see about, that's about how much is in there and black pepper, because I'm a fan of black pepper. Black pepper makes everything better. If you don't like it, leave it out. And we're not gonna add too much, just a little bit. All right, got our handy dandy spatula, and we're just gonna mix that up. I hope I can do Debbie Dee's pie justice, because I know she's probably gonna watch. Hey, Deb. Yeah, simple as that, not hard at all. I'm doing a lot of pies. All right, guys. And we got a notification from our Instacart shopper that she was able to find fresh basil, so She'll be here in a few minutes with fresh basil, and I'm very excited that we actually get to use the fresh basil instead of the squirt basil. Squirt basil works fine. It would have been fine, and even dry basil would be fine. But fresh basil, there's nothing like it. All right, there we go. All right, when we're ready to fill this pie in just a few minutes, I will be right back and show you how it all comes together. Okay, everybody, <laughs> we're back. Okay, it has been quite a morning trying to get this pie together, and uh, this is actually pie crust number three. <laughs> yeah, three. It costs for a pre-baked pie crust, and I had one last Marie Callender's in the freezer, and I put that into pre-bake. I poked the hole so it didn't rise up, and well, it rose up, and then it broke. Okay, so then I tried making my own. Well, let's just say I am not a good big crust maker. <laughs> and that ended in disaster too. So I had to place a quick Instacart order and I'm so thankful for our, our driver who actually got me a good pie crust. This is just a Kroger uh, refrigerated dough pie crust. And she actually found me basil. She asked the manager of the store if they had basil. And so they came up with some fresh basil, so I'm really happy about that. Okay, we are going to put this pie together and get it in the oven so that you can see what we have. Very simple. We're going to layer these beautiful tomatoes around the pie. And that's ready to squish them in there. And I'm going to take our little our pieces here and just break them up, put them in the little areas so we have a full layer. All right, next step is layer some onions. You don't want too many, but you want enough so to where you might get 
a little piece of onion in every bite. I would not recommend making this without the onions because it really does give it good flavor. And we've got the basil. So thankful to have fresh basil. Apparently that's a difficult thing to come by and I need to grow my own. Uh, and I, we were growing in one of the Aero uh, hydroponic gardens, but our parsley kind of overtook everything. So we need to actually try that again and replant. All right, so then it just called. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle just a little more Italian seasoning. I think it just adds a little oomph. Some salt. I use the Malay sea salt, so a little of that really goes a long way. And pepper. And then we're gonna do it again. One more layer. Two layers is all we're getting. That's okay, Brooks will have some left for a mater sandwich. You ever have a mater sandwich? He's over there going, mmm. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to break up one of these little doogers. Doogers. <laughs> that's, a, that's a word my mother used growing up, which means whenever you can't think of what to say, like doohickey, or thingamabob, my mom would say doogers. You ever heard of a dooger? And more onions. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good, I know it. Tomato pie season. For something that I just couldn't wrap my head around, I sure do love it. So also this week we're gonna be making, or uh, today, but it will be a separate video. It'll be tomato week. Is fried green tomatoes with a homemade remoulade sauce. So we'll make something that's southern a little bit fancy. And it'll be delicious. So we're having a tomato day. Probably Brooks is one of the most favorite foods is tomatoes. All right. Get that piece of basil spread around pretty good. Then that looked really pretty and and colorful. It's awful heavy. Beautiful. All right. I'm gonna grab one more sprinkle of Italian seasoning. And that's not in the original recipe, but it's my addition and I think it's great. A little bit of salt. A bit of pepper. What'd you say? Lay is a flavor. Lay is a flavor. Of flavor. Speaking of flavor, Brooks and I went to Guy Fieri's downtown Flavor Town in Pigeon Forge the other day. And if you've been to the Smokies recently, you know that is like one of the hottest tickets in town, so to speak. It's very, very cool and the food is amazing. So we did a full review of that if you want to check it out in another video. But it was a lot of fun and Definitely, we have an insider tip in there on how you can maybe not wait so long uh, to get in to eat. So check that video out if you are coming to Pigeon Forge and you want to see one of the hottest tickets in town. Uh, we would love to share that with you. All right. Last step. The delicious, cheesy, mayonnaise -y topping. So basically what you're going to do with this is you're going to carry
carefully smooth it out across the top, be, being careful to kind of seal the edges so that your tomatoes don't bubble up too much. Of course, once they bake, they will they will lose some of their size with losing the, li the liquid in them. Hopefully, we drain them long enough. Um, I'd say they've been on the paper towels for maybe half an hour, which gives you plenty of time to get your other stuff together and wash your dishes up and get whatever else together that you're going to plan to have with your meal. I think we're going to just do four on the cob. We were able to pick some of that up at Carver's yesterday. Um, so we got some of that. It's not really corn season yet either, but Carver's always has really good fresh vegetables. And you can see Carver's in the video that we, uh, I think it's uploading as we speak. It's a, a drive through Foothills Parkway. Uh, Foothills Parkway is part of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and there's four beautiful pull-off um, overlooks. And I've got video footage of all of that, but it's just a really pretty drive. It's kind of off the beaten path of the Smokies, so if you don't want to be in the in the, the heat of the, the town and the busyness, um, it, it's out in Cosby, which is a really kind of a quieter area in the Smokies. And it's just a nice drive, especially in the fall. But it's beautiful in the summer as well. All right, I think we're good. But the only way to know if we're good is to get a bit in the oven and see what happens. I'm trying to make sure there's no exposed tomatoes. You say tomato, I say tomato. You say potato, I say potato. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Let's not. Um, do you say tomato, tomato, or tomato? <laughs> Comment with how you say it. All right. It is ready. It is ready to go in the oven. You're going to go 350 for about 30 minutes, and it's going to be bubbly and beautiful. And we'll check in about halfway through to see how it's doing. Minutes through, which is halfway. And it is looking delicious. We'll be back in just a little bit to show you the finished Southern Debbie G's tomato pie. Okay, our Debbie G's Southern tomato pie is done and it smells amazing. It looks amazing. We got a little brown on the crust there, uh, but that's okay. To me, a little bit of dark is no big deal. We've got it garnished with some pretty basil and some tomatoes. And the thing is, what we got to do now is we got to cut into it. Got to cut into it and see how it tastes. All right. Not a good pie cutter, so we're gonna we're gonna try and do this. Artfully take off those pretty tomatoes. It has been a tomato kind of day. We did fried green tomatoes, except they're fried pink tomatoes, in a video that's going to be posted shortly after this one. And uh, I gotta say, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but they probably might be the most favorite fried quote green or pink tomatoes I've ever had. They say you can't fry a pink tomato. They lied. All right, here we go. Oh, that looks so good and it's cutting so nice. Beautiful. Feels just right. Uh-uh, no kitties on the table. <laughs> Neelan smells it and says, I want some. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Oh gosh, it smells so good. Now oh, the first piece is never pretty. We'll have to find a pretty piece for the picture, but that's okay. It's really how it tastes that matters the most in this house. Alright, I'm going to taste test this time. I'm not sharing. Brooks is looking at me like, what do you mean you ain't sharing? Take a look at that. That looks so yummy. Debbie G, I think you'll be proud. Oh, that's perfect. I'm not kidding. The layers of the tomato, basil, onion, and then all that cheese are just perfect. Mm. It's tomato pie season. I recommend that you definitely get you some tomato pie. I'm going to show you the inside here real quick. See, draining the tomatoes made it to where it is not runny. It's just kind of nice. It is wet, but it's just kind of a really nice consistency. And then that, that cheese on top is just perfect. We really want to thank you everyone for watching. We're really kind of just starting out on this YouTube channel journey with Smoky Mountain Faith <laughs> Smoky Mountain Faith Food and Fun. And we hope you've had some fun with us. And we hope to do a whole lot more videos uh, going around our Smoky Mountains. Brooks has got some things, uh, some short devotionals coming up soon. And I need you to please like and please subscribe. Uh, right now we are under a thousand followers. We need to get to a thousand followers so that YouTube will upload our videos in a higher quality, which we would definitely like to do, but they kind of compress the video down a little bit until you have a thousand subscribers and then you're considered a substantial channel. So we want to be a substantial channel. So if you would please like our videos, subscribe, please make comments. Ask us questions. We are there to answer you because we want to share our, our knowledge with you for sure. And we just want to say that God bless you. Please, if you have prayer requests, as always, you are welcome to email us at ramseymemail at gmail.com and we'll be there to read and pray with you for whatever the problem might be because God loves you and we love you and that's why we're here. We're, we're wanting to share a little bit about our life and share the love of the Lord with everyone. So like and subscribe. Email if you need to. We're here for you. Make a comment. We would sure love that. And definitely make you some of Debbie G's Southern Tomato Pie. You will not be disappointed. Bye-bye, everybody.